Time for us to document, as we do, all the many ways in which the media covers themselves in glory with our great friend Katie Halper, host of the Katie Halper Show, co-host of the Useful Idiots podcast. Always great to see you, Katie. Thanks, you guys, too. Yeah. All right, Katie. So we got to start off with this. I love this. Jack Schaefer, who is actually a great media critic over at Politico, he has this story. Let's throw it up there on the screen about how the same media has this sudden crush on Kamala Harris after they wrote all these scathing takedowns of how terrible her campaign was. First, they tried to make her happen. Then they recognized that it didn't happen whatsoever. Now, Katie, she's the most brilliant woman in the history of the world. What What's going on here? It's like the craziest backlash. You would have no idea that this person failed dramatically in the Democratic primary so badly, had to drop out before Iowa to spare herself the embarrassment of losing California, her own home state. It's just incredible. Yeah, I thought that was a great article. Uh, and, and lest we needed any evidence of what um, Schaefer is describing, there's actually a piece at, uh, I, I got to give a shout out to my uh, co-host, Matt Taibbi from Useful Idiots, because he actually mentioned this on our show this week. But a great piece called, uh, the reason Kamala Harris was a bad presidential candidate is the reason she could be a good vice presidential candidate. <laughs> um, which you Incredible. Just, you, you can't make this up, right? That was by yeah. James Pendle at the, at the Globe, so shout out to him. And I, I think what it is really interesting watching these people scramble. Uh, one of the great uh, sentences from this piece is, uh, but that's history. Now what Biden requires in his running mate is someone who is politically flexible and someone with whom he has few areas of fundamental disagreement that President Trump can exploit the way there would have been if, say, Elizabeth Warren were the choice. And I think what that speaks to is something that's true about Harris, which is that she really does have a pretty ideology-free um uh, uh, record not right. as a as a not as someone who's in power per se, or certainly not as the attorney general, but uh, as a campaigner. And uh, you know, she really flip flopped. She supported Bernie's Medicare for All for about a day. Then she was criticized for it. So she offered her own thing, which she absolutely could not explain. I don't think most of her aides or anyone in her staff could explain it either. Um, because it really didn't make sense. So I think that, and this is true. I think one of the things the left is kind of I don't know if we're happy about it, but it is in a weird way. Maybe it's good that she's so such a blank slate and such an opportunist. And so um, she almost has a Donald Trump thing going on where she doesn't really have that much of an ideology and she'll kind of go wherever the wind pushes her, which perhaps gives the left some power if we want to push her. But of course, we, we have very little power when compared to the corporate interests and the donors that she's going to be pushed by in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. I guess there's, I see her as being, having been more consistent in terms of ultimately kowtowing to power in the donor class. I mean, that's why Wall right. Street cheered. That's why in the vice presidential selection process, I mean, the New York Times wrote this up, that the reason that she was one of the favored candidates was because of how much the donor community loves her, how popular she is with bundlers. So I right. see the actual record of how she's governed as being fairly consistent. Now, some of the things she said has been a progressive at times. Even some of the votes that she's taken in the Senate on, you know, on things that ultimately aren't really going anywhere have been good progressive signals. But when she's actually had power, she let Silicon Valley off the hook. She will let Wall Street right. off the hook. And so I am I'm less I appreciate your optimism, but I am less hopeful. Um, yeah. but we also we also wanted to turn, though, to our to our good friend, um, Chuck Todd, who oh has God. some our, uh, our some fave, really our fave. It yeah. really insightful analysis about Biden's press approach. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Well, we thought we'd give a couple of the shouted uh, shouted questions a chance to see if they would turn, you know, once it's a, it's a fascinating little back and forth that we in the press try to do. You throw the shouted questions, see if they turn, if they have a habit of it, as a couple of former, one current and one former senator, sometimes they do. Um, there you just saw Joe Biden showing a little discipline and avoiding it. A little wow, discipline. Like, it's like you're supposed to be pressing these yeah. people. You're as a reporter, be... you're supposed to be like, I wish you would do that so or something. Amazing. But it's so, so yeah. disciplined well, and awesome. And not to mention, if it was Trump who ignored right. the questions, exactly. do you think he'd yeah. still be always right. disciplined? Yeah, very, Good very, for him for ignoring right. the press. Totally. Stone faced <laughs> yeah. Donald. Yeah. Yeah, stoic. Stoic Donald. Discipline stoic Donald. So what happened is just so people know, right before that we see people shouting some questions at him and Biden just turns around, right, and exits the stage and goes behind a, a literal curtain. Pretty good metaphor. But um, you know, it's it is amazing. First of all, I want to give uh, Chuck uh, Todd a shout out for basically doing that very 
um, platitude filled kind of voice where he's not saying anything. And I think that's a great in homage in homage to Brian Williams. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but it's like you it, it's a good sign that you're about to say something that's absolutely meaningless and you're kind of grasping for straws and you see him do that. His hand goes back and forth and he has no idea how to spin this as something positive. And as you said, had had Donald Trump done that, it would have been very unprofessional, very amateurish. What a joke. This guy's president. He can't even respond to the press. He hates the press. It's an attack on the press. And lo and behold, Biden does this and uh, is praised for his discipline. Now, to be fair, I think Chuck Todd may be on to something because we've all seen Biden kind of get into gaffes. And we've also That's seen true. what he says when he's allowed to speak. Right. So most recent thing that I know, of, I'm sure I'm sure in five minutes there's going to be a worse one. But, you know, he, he asked a, a reporter if he was on, on on cocaine, if he was a junkie when he was asked about his cognitive abilities. Um, and we see him whenever Biden did this during the debates and does this now is he's like, uh, I yield my time or, and I'm going to stop myself right there. And that actually is for Biden discipline. It's just a sad display of discipline because that's not really the type of discipline you want someone to show when they're uh, the, uh, the nominee for president or president, which is basically let me shut myself up before I say something I'll regret. God, I kind of forgot that deflating tick that he had during That's the right. debates. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. My time actually, up, and they're like, uh, actually, I yield my time. Yeah. Actually, so you, you have, have like, like another minute. More, five more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, Katie, always great to Good see you. Yeah, Thank you. you. And, sh and shout out on the Moore story, which now, of course, we've all been vindicated on. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate latest. that. Absolutely. All right. We'll have more rising for you after this.